we have a brand new expansion for the Bad Karmas, and this one is called The Curse of Cthulhu, and this is going to be a standalone expansion, so you don't need the original game in order to play this one, but this will play very similar to that game with a few small changes. First of all, this is going to be taking place in a Cthulhu universe, which means that you're going to be going up against a bunch of great old ones and different monsters from that universe, and there is going to be four new characters that players can choose to play as. The big difference with this one is that not only can the monsters kill you, but they can also drive you into madness. And the whole goal here is for players to try and defeat these monsters before they are either killed or driven to insanity. I did cover the original campaign back when it launched, and like I said, this one will be playing very similar to that original game. So if you do want to learn more about this one, I'll just go ahead and roll that previous footage for you now. And this is a cooperative boss battler with 12 demigods known as Zodiacs, and these are going to be giant miniatures that you're going to have out on the board, and players are going to be trying to battle these different gods. As they evolve during the battle, react to the player's decisions and actually change the environment where this combat is happening. And the gameplay for this one isn't too complex, it's going to be really easy to learn and teach, but it's going to be including something that's really unique, and I will get to that in a moment. But the way that you play this game is that players are going to be taking turns attacking the boss. At the start of each round, players decide the order that their characters are going to attack, and then they're also going to decide a stance. And the stance is going to allow for some different abilities or tendencies, and these can be different things like allowing that player to have quicker cooldowns that round, or a stronger defense, or other things like that. After players have decided their order and stance, they're going to be alternating turns, and on a player's turn they get a free movement action, then they're going to be able to play cards to perform their additional actions, and these different actions can be things like different attacks, additional movements, or buffing up their team, or debuffing the enemy, or interacting in different ways with the environment. The boss in this one will react to the actions that the players perform, and it's going to be very intelligent in the way that it does that, because these are actually going to be smart miniatures. But the smarts does not come in the miniature itself, it actually comes with the game board because this game board is actually going to have some digital components to it, which is going to allow the board to understand where your characters are and where the boss is, and it's going to integrate with an app that will track all the health and attacks and all the different actions that were performed. This is going to be a main app where all the game-based actions occur, and it's going to narrate a little bit about what's happening and allow the players to know what happens next. But then there's also an app for individual players to pull up on their phone where they'll be able to choose the cards that they want to play and whatever actions that they choose to do on their turn. Not only that, but they've also added some immersive audio and visual cues based on what's happening in the game. So some of these bases and components will light up depending on what actions were taken in the game, and different audio will trigger at certain times to add to that immersive experience. But it doesn't stop there because the board will also come with its own set of smart dice and as you roll these dice this will also communicate to the board and the app which dice were rolled and that will automatically be considered in the whole digital aspect of this game. So this one is not only a campaign for a boss battler with some beautiful miniatures but it's also a campaign for a new and really innovative idea that's been in the works for quite a while. And this innovative game board is known as the Teburu, and this is not just designed for the specific game. You can think of this more like a game console, like a Switch or a PlayStation or Xbox, where this just has the core interface to link all the different components together, but then you can make any game to interface with these. So I'm sure we'll be seeing a lot more games like this in the future, and it will be really interesting to see what sort of new ideas come out of